Hello, I'm Sam Adderface and he is Scott Parker. And we've got your full Premier League preview on Yahoo Sport. Yep, this is in on goal. And with us this week, Scott Parker and Andy Townsend. Andy, delighted to have you with us. How are you, OK? Very good, thank you. All good, yes. Uh, former Chelsea player and a man who was behind the mic on the night mm. where Liverpool scored the ghost goal. Correct. Um, and obviously that is one of the reasons why there's such a rivalry between Liverpool and Chelsea, which is our big game this weekend, 5.30 Saturday night. Did you know immediately that it no. was definitely not a goal? No, I had no idea, Sam, because we weren't furnished with goal line technology or anything like that at that time we didn't even have a camera along the goal line all we had was an 18 yard and of course you know you want to try and you want to try and call it right as it happens that's your job and you know you're guessing just completely shooting in the dark but it was a big game and you're right funnily enough since that day the two teams have there's been that extra something and uh, riding on a lot of games whenever they've met and it's it's made for a really good rivalry. Of course you had that um, 2014 Gerrard slip, Williams scoring the goal. Yeah. You've had the penalty shootouts as well since then. Who wins, Klopp or Conte this weekend? I think I go for a draw and I'm not sitting on the fence when I say that to be <laughs> fair. You know, I can see it being a draw. Does, is there any aftermath from, from Liverpool midweek? Maybe so, especially as the game goes on. You first. First blow is going to be crucial and it could have an effect on Liverpool, but yeah, I think it'll be a tight game. Yeah, I've gone 2-2 in this game between Liverpool and Chelsea, um, but obviously the week that they've had is going to have an impact on what happens on Saturday because this is a side that were 3-0 up cruising in Europe and all of a sudden everything changes. Yep. Do you take that into the weekend psychologically? You can't help but have some of it. You can't help but have a bit of that still lurking in the back of your mind. I mean, you're absolutely right. I, I personally think they've got it within their powers to beat, to beat Chelsea this weekend. I think they might win the game because they are so up and down. Uh, they cruised against Southampton a few days before. And then, as you say, from being in a very positive position, throwing it away against Sevilla midweek. But they're just the sort of team, Liverpool, that can turn up and produce something special. He's got a decent record against the big clubs, Jurgen Klopp. Mm. And, uh, and I fancy him actually to beat Chelsea at the weekend. I don't know why, I just do. I think they might. They're just that difficult one to predict. Going forward, Mo Salah is unbelievably rapid. Have you ever seen anybody so fast? No. Been an unbelievable signing. Went to, went to Chelsea and probably, I'd like to put it down to opportunity. I don't, I don't think he probably had a fair crap. I think he played 12 games in, in the year he was there. Went off to Fiorentina and set it alight, really. 29 mm. appearances, I think, scored nine goals. Um, I think he's a top, top player. Top player. Talking of top players, because of the start that Solar has had and Lukaku as well, has Alvaro Morata gone under the radar a little bit? Uh, yeah, probably he has. Um, you know, I was amazed when they sold Diego Costa because I thought he was the perfect fit. And he, last year, in, with, with, with Hazard and Pedro, they were so good. And I, and I was thinking, wow, is Nath going to have to push the boat out now to find the right one to come in and replace that guy. But you know what? The signs are already that Morata's going to be top draw. Um, it's it completely reminds, different personality. Different isn't it? personality I mean, completely. He doesn't want to get involved <coughs> necessarily. doesn't want any confrontation. Not seen him have any of that at all. But I think we've seen from him the, goals, the goal he scored at Stoke where he got it on the halfway line and just ran away from everybody and finished yeah. it very well. His heading ability is very, very good. Mm. I, I, I don't know if you agree, Scott. I see a young... Like, like a Fernando Torres uh, when he yeah. was at Liverpool, mm. not the one at Chelsea. Yeah. The one that was at Liverpool when he used to run beyond people. I, I still think there's a little bit more to come as well. And I honestly still think, I think you can play different ways when we're out on your team. Strong, like you said, got a presence about him, good with his feet. I think he's a top, top, top signing. Like to be if fair. you're Lovren and, and Ragnar Klavan this weekend, are you a little bit scared about how to deal with him? One thing that surprised me the most was what Andy said there. He, he, I've seen him run past people and when he first signed, I thought it was probably a Bit of a big lump, technically very good, can, can hold up play, but I never thought he had the pace of a Costa, no, no. a Lukaku, for a top, top, top team like Chelsea. But you know, I think he's got all sorts to his game what can cause him some serious problems, to be fair. Yeah, no, I would totally agree. I think, look, whoever Liverpool are up against at the moment gives them nightmares, mm -hmm. you know. So, and certainly someone like Morata, who's got a lot of strings to his bow is someone that they're going to have to try and deal with. They're going to have to deny him for sure. Jurgen Klopp said he would resign if realistically it got to the point where he didn't think Liverpool could win the Premier League under him. Can you see that happening anytime soon? Look, I, I can and I think 
there's no doubt Jurgen Klopp's team's are fantastic going in the forward direction. The players that he's got are fantastic. It's the guys and, and the guys that they're looking at and, and, and the ones that they've been buying so far at the back that aren't appearing to be good enough. Or that one in front, another one. Naby Keita may might make the difference next year, we'll see. But they've certainly got enough going forwards to win the league. Yeah, I think, I think their transfer dealings are title-winning signings going forward. I think defensively they're not. I think Keita will be a massive signing for them next year. They need to probably add a, there's a Van Dijk talk, there's a, a top, couple of top centre-offs. Manchester United against Brighton. Um, 4-0 was the score in the FA Cup final replay of 1983. I know you remember it like it was yesterday. I do, I remember that. <laughs> I've gone for a repeat because Manchester United have scored four goals seven times already this season. You've gone for a Manchester United win as well. You think they get the job done? I think they get the job done. I think they come up against a team in Brighton with Chris Hewton who's, who's very disciplined, sets up his teams very well. Two good centre-halves in in Duffy and Dunk, who are quite old-fashioned in their ways. Yeah. Mm. I think it will be a, a dogged display, but I think Man United have got enough to, 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 to get a win. Have you been surprised by Brighton? Five unbeaten? No, because knowing Chris as I do, he's, very, he's a very solid manager. They've not been... Nobody's turned up yet and gone bang. Look, they might get swatted away at the weekend, as you say, four or five. United are capable of that. But up to now, I think the worst defeat they've had is, is by two goals. They've, they've been competitive. Even when you watch them at home, they don't go crazy. They don't get back fours not up on the halfway line. They're trying to force this and force that. I think they're quite measured and, and, and quite uh, deliberate about what they do. They just want to be competitive, stay in the game, keep a good shape and make life difficult for whoever they're playing against to break them down. It's worked so far. Friday night sees the first home game for David Moyes and his assistant Stuart Pearce at the London Stadium. It's West Ham against Leicester City. It's very early for, for David Moyes, but how much grace period does he have, do you think? As harsh as it sounds, I don't, I, don't, I don't think he has one at West Ham. I think he's come in and it's, it's going to be very difficult for him early on. I think the key for him is trying to get results as quick as possible and hopefully the pendulum swings a little bit and the fans get on board. But in terms of a grace period, I, you know, I think that's a job he's gone into. I think he'll understand that as well, David. I, I don't think he'll have a grace period there. He needs to, get, he needs to hit the ground running very quick, really. Uh, they're taking on a Leicester side that uh, have suffered just one defeat in seven under three different managers. Uh, what did you make of the appointment of Claude Puel? Because I was a bit surprised by that. Same. Really, really surprised at the, at the time. Didn't think it was an appointment which, personally, if I was in that seat, I would have made. So, um, in saying that, has come in, done well, and has got a good track record in terms of previous clubs. Take Southampton out of that, had a good time at Lyon. Um, yeah, so he's, uh, you know, I think he's done a sound job so far. Going to whiz on to Crystal Palace against uh, Stoke City. Uh, well, Stoke City have got a guy who comes off the bench and seemingly always does the business. This week, uh, Peter Crouch celebrated his 143rd Premier League substitute mm -hmm. appearance. Sum up his career for me in one sentence. God, blimey. Uh, do you know what? He's still Stoke's best striker. What, how old is he now, Peter? Nearly 37. Nearly 37. He's still their best striker. He's, he, he plays a game with a smile. He's got a love for the game, plays with a smile on his face. Scott, he would probably know him yeah. very well. Yeah. I, think he's a, I think he's a great pro and, and he's still their best striker. If, you, if you're Mark Hughes on the bench, you're 1-1, one, one, you're nil nil, you're a couple down, he's your go-to man. You look on the bench, you wouldn't want another, another player other than Crouch to come on and, and mix it up. The game itself, Crystal Palace definitely need to start picking up points. Stoke do too, really, don't they? Yeah, on the travel, Stoke, they won at Watford recently, been down to Brighton and got a point. I think they're a little bit, a little bit more comfortable on the road. I think that's a, that's, that's a tougher game for Roy Hodgson um, at home to Stoke than perhaps one or two might think. Perhaps a lot of the Palace fans are already looking at that one and thinking, yeah, that's one we can win. Of course they can, but I think Stoke on their travels... Um, are proving to be, and particularly of late, a difficult team to beat. No manager, no cry after uh, two wins with 21 matches. West Bromwich Albion dispensed with the services of Tony Pulis this week. They bowed to fan pressure. Right decision, wrong decision, what do you reckon? Um, you know what, look, after two, only two wins in 21, mm. I don't think Tony can have too many complaints. Um, What's the interesting thing now is about make it, getting the decision right. We've seen West Brom in the past. They went with Pepe Mill. They brought him in, which, again, was another one where everyone's gone, what? You know, and with the greatest respects to him, didn't work. So they've got to make sure they get the, the new one right. They've got a new owner. This is the first time he's had to put his head above the parapet, really. 
and, 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 and start trusting the people that he's got running the club to make the right call. Uh, Spurs lost to Chelsea at home. They've lost away at Arsenal and Manchester United already. Um, but against West Brom, they should be all right as long as Harry Kane's fit. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can't see, I can't see West Brom causing him a problem this, this weekend. Like you said, Harry Kane comes out of the midweek game against Dortmund. Oh, um, what a goal he scored. Lovely finish. Um, I think they get back on it this weekend with a, with a win. Harry Kane's fitness, does, does Spurs' success or failure hinge on that? Because he's such a big part of what they do. I can't see Tottenham wanting, winning anything without, without him being involved most of the time. He might not play all the games. He's, he's a very durable player. What I love about Harry Kane, he always wants to get himself out there to play. He's got to be managed. He's got to be told to have a breather every now and again when the time is right. But if Tottenham want to win, if Tottenham want to win trophies, He's going to be the man scoring the, all their goals and, and leading the line. He's a phenomenal player. I love him. OK, Swansea, uh, Bournemouth. Uh, Swansea have really suffered this season, haven't they? Paul Clement, though, apparently is going to get a little bit more time. I've gone for Eddie Howe to come out on top in this game because I just think there's a bit of momentum yeah. now at uh, the Vitality Stadium. Even though they're going away from home, I just think they're in great form. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. Certainly could, which would be which would spell trouble for Paul Clement if it does end up that way. But Callum Wilson coming back and, and getting amongst the goals again, good to see him fit and looking like the boy he was a couple of years ago. But Swansea made some let some very good players go over the last three or four years. They've let a lot of good players go. That sometimes happens, doesn't it? I mean, well, it, it does, Sam. But I think that they couldn't the, have turned down the money for Sigurdsson. No, no, they couldn't. But. Have they invested it that great? Are they expecting too much of people like Tammy Abraham? Yes, I think they are. Um, are they still a bit of a mess at the back? Yes, they are. Uh, and, and, and to me, I think they'll have it full on this year, Swansea, to survive. They've won four of the last five games, uh, Bournemouth. The biggest problem for Swansea is scoring goals, isn't it? And it's very difficult to rectify that. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's the, it's the one thing every club is, is aiming to, to try and get a top class forward in. I think, I don't know what you think, I think the big decision that club have got to make in January is whether they, they go for it and go and spend some money or, or the writing's on the wall. That's how I see it. And they I, don't trust know, I don't know about yourself. If they trust that group of players at the moment who are showing that they haven't got enough, Wilfred Boney, what, you know, that was a, that was a bad signing. Let's be fair, That's, that, that never, ever, ever looked like working. And uh, they're going to need to to have a serious think in January. Uh, the last time Swansea beat Bournemouth ten years ago, Ferry Bodie, Warren Feeney, and Darius Lawrence on the score sheet in League One. Yeah, a decade ago, which is almost about as uh, long as Everton have taken over appointing a new manager. They've got Southampton uh, this weekend. Why haven't they hired someone? What does that tell you about what's going on? I think it's probably just echoed everything in terms of what people were thinking, what a bit of a mess the club's probably in and it's probably now been brought out in the open for everyone to see because I, I think probably early on in the season transfer wise I, I don't think they quite got it right, it seemed a bit messy um, and then obviously now with taking such a long time to appoint the manager has been a, has been a bit disastrous really so um, yeah, they need to act and they need to act quite quick. Umar Nias, this guy has gone from no club suit, no locker <laughs> to five goals in seven games and then he's been banned. I mean, it, I mean, that's a disaster for them as well, isn't it? Uh, but was it a dive? Should he have been banned? And are we for or against that sort of punishment? Was a dive, yeah. Should he be banned? Yeah. Um, the only part about it I don't like is for Palace. It, what do they get out of it? Mm. They get, they get oh, a round of applause because... Should he be banned for the next time they play Crystal Palace? Would that be more appropriate? <laughs> well, I mean, again, it's going too, too long, too far away, Sam, mm. I think. Uh, you know, look, I've been doing this, in, in, I've been working in the media now for the best part of 20 years and we've been talking for, for 10 years at least that we've got the technology to act upon these incidents when they happen and, and, and as they happen. That looks like it's coming into place next year um, and bring it on as far as I'm concerned. You know, the quicker they do, the quicker teams like Palace don't get punished. Uh, well, well and good this retrospective action but what happens to Palace? They, they end up drawing a game that they might have won. You coach younger players now. Yeah. When you're coaching those players, if you're watching from the sidelines and someone gets a little knock inside the penalty area, are you for or against them going down? I think I think is that there's a fine line. There's a, there's a line between it's a difficult one, yeah, isn't there it? is. There's a line between cheating and, and trying to con the ref and trying to cheat, and there's a line between game management, understanding the game. Can you can you get a slight advantage? My worry with the video is, is that the game goes so quick, it's happening so quick, and in the heat of the moment, in terms of people running at full speed and the pace they're running at, mm. 
sitting in front of a video, you can always come at the end of it and go, oh, he definitely died. But at that time, it's, it's difficult. We probably never run that fast to understand what it was like, <laughs> did we? Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. so, but it's, I it's, think there was yeah. once in about 2002. Yeah, maybe, you maybe. But you it's, it's, I, I think it's difficult. I, I honestly think it's difficult at times. I know what Scott's saying. It's not a conscious decision. Umar Nias doesn't get the, pick the ball up and run at people and think, I'm going to dive here. I've got yeah. a great chance of nicking a penalty. No, you don't do that. You burst into a situation, something happens, and you, you react, and you haven't even had time to weigh out all the consequences, the pros and cons. You just do it. Uh, you know, but it's it, there's something it stings if a player is called a cheat. It's the worst thing. Yeah. It's the worst thing as a player to be called is is you're a cheat and you're known as a cheat. So you'd like to think that Umar Nias next time, whether he likes it or not, he's going to stay on his feet and try and make something of a little bit more of the situation. Okay, one word answer from both of you. Are you definitely 100% sure that it was a dive? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Southampton hardly score any goals. In fact, seven times this season they failed to score. Um, so we won't spend too much time worrying about them. But I am surprised that you've gone for a 1 0 Southampton victory. Yeah, I just. It was a tough one, to be honest with you, Sam. There's, it wasn't cr jumping out the page for me. I just. Southampton at home, I give them a little bit of an advantage. So, yeah, no, I fancy them to win. Uh, let's turn our attention to Huddersfield against Manchester City. Now, this is my golden ticket. And the reason it's my golden ticket is because I want to see whether. Huddersfield can do what they did to Manchester United to Manchester City. What do you reckon? No. <laughs> no, no, in a word. Um, look, they, they, they did fantastic against United and, and deserved their victory on the day. There's nothing fluky about that, but this is a different opponent, a completely different set of, set of tools required to, 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 to stop Pep Guardiola's team. I cannot see it happening. I, I can only see City winning this and probably by two or three. Another good shellacking? Yeah, I, I, I see Man City. I, honestly, I... I don't see. I can, I can see Man City going undefeated this year. To be honest with you, I, can you? I, yeah, I, I, I think they're that good. That they're, they're the positional play on the field, that, that just everything about them. Top class manager, uh, strength in depth with their squad. I, I think it's yeah, very good. Do you think? That, I mean, they've got 12 games between now and January the second. Do you think that they can manage that with the squad they've got? They've already yeah. lost John Stones. I just think their squad's just so so big. I think they've got quality all, all over in terms of players not in the squad, players on the bench. I just think they can, yeah, I, I think they're a top, top side to be honest with you. Uh, the last time City went to the John Smith Stadium was 17 years ago. Clive Weinhard scored the equaliser for Huddersfield. I think it was just before that that City beat them 10-1 at home. That could be on the cards this weekend. Uh, Newcastle Watford, uh, the talk of the tune is all about the takeover. But Rafa's got to start winning, hasn't he? Because it's what, yep. now seven games, one victory? Got to start winning. You've got to start turning some of those draws and, and narrow defeats into, into victories, as you say. It's a home game. It's, a, it's the sort of game at the start of the season that Rafa will look at and think, that's one we've got to win. If we want us to play Premier League football next season, that is one that we have to be winning. Like Newcastle, same as West Ham, fans are massive. Big, big, big. I was obviously at both clubs. Massive Is there fan anyone base. on that list you haven't played for? Yeah, actually. true. Yeah, there's true. a few, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan More base. What can, be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what can be crucial to them? They, if, if you get them on your back, you, yeah, they're going to be up against it. They need to start winning some games quick, to be fair. Burnley against Arsenal. Three wins on the spin. Three games uh, without conceding. They've conceded two goals at home all season. They're level on points with Liverpool and Arsenal. Yes, we're talking about Burnley. This is your golden ticket. Why? Golden ticket, probably mainly because of Arsenal. I want to see how they react. I think we've all, everyone over the last few, few seasons have questioned Arsenal, Tottenham at home last weekend, turn up, probably lack turning up against games like Burnley, yeah. Burnley away really. So I think I'd like my golden ticket for that. I just want to see if they turn up like they did at the weekend, we, we see at the weekend, there's probably not many clubs what can match them to be honest with you, but where they let themselves down is against the, the lower, lower level. Because side. Arsenal beat Spurs last weekend and was so convincing, it would be just like Arsenal to go and lose at Burnley. That's why I've gone for a Burnley victory. It would be. It, it would be. I understand what you're saying. I, I happen to feel this weekend, I mean, look, what Sean Dyche does at Burnley and the way he does it is great. And they are a really thorough, well-groomed and well-prepared team. Um, I think Arsenal... The pace they have when they when they operate at their best, I think the pace they got in their team might be a bit much for Burnley. I would agree. I think I think Arsenal will go there and win. 
they are incredibly well groomed. They all go to a barber's, which is just round the corner. <laughs> for, this is a true story from the training ground. Sometimes Sean Dyche nips out in between training and his media duties to get his head shaved. So are you story. serious? Then? That is absolutely true story. That's why they're well groomed. Um, why has he not been poached yet? Very, very good question. Does he definitely leave? I mean, look, you can't take Burnley any higher than where they are. That mm. is, that's, we know that. that so, so the timing is right for him to go and take a, a, an opportunity that might, might on paper be better. But you know what? He might want to stay and enjoy this moment. Mm. He's worked really hard, Sean, to get, stay in the division, produce a team that's capable of staying in the division. Why not live in the moment and enjoy it for a little bit longer? Because if he comes out there and goes to Everton, back foot straight away right on the back foot from minute one and he's been there he's kind of done that he might just want to live in this moment for a little bit longer okay it's tradition on uh, in on goal for the guest to pick who has got the better predictions out of me and scott uh, it's a hundred pound riding on the line here okay. andy yeah uh, and i've got a bit of time afterwards if you want to spend a hundred pound in a pub so it's up to you but you choose which one's got the better predictions out well, of service you can make a case for both of you however sam i think your stupidity, really, to suggest <laughs> that Huddersfield could possibly deny <laughs> Manchester City is the absolute swinger for me there. So All I'm right. going with Scotty's fixtures. I've never, ever won one of these yet. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I, I haven't got the money on me, so I'm going to write an IOU. Is that all right? <laughs> of course it is, mate. OK, a big midweek programme as well. It's a very congested period with Christmas just around the corner. Loads of fixtures in midweek to look forward to as well. I've done my predictions for this. and uh, Surprisingly, I, I haven't gone for a second great Huddersfield <laughs> result. Uh, and I have gone for a big Manchester City victory over Southampton. What stands out for you as far as the midweek games are concerned? There's some good ones in there for sure. Uh, Everton West Ham. Wow, that's a big game. That's a that's a huge one for. I mean, could Marco Silva possibly be there by then? Who knows? Yeah. You know, you never know. Uh, and Moyes going David back. David Moyes going back. That's a that's a big night for him. That's a big night for his team, and a big night for him personally. That's a that's a significant game. That. Uh, Leicester Tottenham's an interesting one for me, Scott, uh, because uh, last year Tottenham went to Leicester and won six one. Absolutely blew them away. I don't know, I just got this feeling this time it might be different. You obviously haven't. Yeah, no, I, I just, at the moment, I, Tottenham on the road, I can't, I can't see past them, to be honest with you. I understand what you're saying. I certainly don't think it's going to be a, a six again, Sam, especially with the manager in, in place at Leicester. I think it'll be more solid. Um, but yeah, I, I see Tottenham too strong again, um, really there, to be honest with you. The other, one is, the other one's Huddersfield for me. Yeah. You know, they, three tough games, obviously Bournemouth coming off the back of a drumming at Bournemouth. Mm. You know, tough game this struggling weekend at Man City, road, struggling on a road. Arsenal, they could be three games, three games down with three defeats. And you're not, their season's not going to be judged on Arsenal and Man City. Of course it's not. But you know what it's like, and three defeats in a row. Once all of a sudden, it become, momentum becomes and it, it becomes difficult. Just that one at the top, Sam, as well. Oh, it's Brighton massive. Palace. Yeah. Massive you know, for them, isn't it? Such a, I mean, there's, there's, it's got like a derby feel to that yeah. particular fixture. I still can't work out why. Well, it's true. There's like 50-odd mile between, whatever it is, 40 mile between them. But, you know, it will be like a, a, a Derby atmosphere and certainly for Crystal Palace. I mean, Chris is now getting to the point where he can, if he manages his squad and his team like I think he will, and a point here and a point there and a win here, a defeat, well, but he can actually get over the line mm -hmm. with the start that they've already made. Roy Hodgson now has got to start winning match. He's got to go to Brighton and think not only about coming away with something, now he's got mm. to think about winning games to get themselves out from out of the trouble they're in. One man who certainly will be up for that game is uh, Glenn Murray and the big question now is, are you up for wrong foot keepy uppies? Well, uh, I've, you know, I've got to be honest, I've been putting a lot of thought and a lot of work into this <laughs> over the hope last so. couple of weeks. You've got a lot to beat. I've got, look, all I'm interested in is not being unlucky number 13. <laughs> <laughs> right. And how did Lee Dixon get to sixth? I, I, he's got an amazing ball control. I think he wore the right footwear. What footwear have you got? I've got a pair of yeah, they, shoes. Well, they, well, John Barnes had it in there, got the, Galliano, so I'm sure you'll be OK. Here you go, here's the ball. Right. Have a feel of it. Don't kick it beforehand. Scott, you're going to help me with this table. Oh, it's a little bit soft for me, Sam. It's a little know. bit soft. Without, Come on, without Andy. Without making any excuses. Bad workman blames his tools. Let's see what you've got. Right, have I got to just go straight into it with me right foot? You've got to sit down. You can't what? stand up. <laughs> Who said anything about... Everybody, everybody else has sat down. You're joking. Get down. Come on. Are you serious? Uh, the only person standing up around here was me, but anyway, oh, I'm going to take a seat How for this. How am I going to do, Scott? How am I going to... 
Uh, here we go. Compete, I'm going to go for. I'm, I'm going to go for five. You've got to beat five because Scott's sitting here watching. I don't you. think I can. Go for it. Let's see. Right. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll do. That'll do nicely. Brilliant. He goes up into joint fourth place. Very, very, very impressive. It wasn't a very comfortable seven either, it though, was it? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's seven every week, Andy. That's all we want. We'll we'll practice. Practice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Practice the last Thank week. you very much, Scott. Cheers for your help. Thanks, Andy. Andy, see you soon. You, Colin man. and Dion will be back next week reflecting on everything that's happened, looking forward to another round of Premier League fixtures. That's it from us. We're out.